to have you here, here in this discussion. We saw the movie, and to be honest, I know that it's, a, it's the worst thing to say by the moderator, but, but it made me cry. It was so powerful, it was so beautiful, and it was so optimistic. Um, and uh, perhaps I'll have the first question. Um, I read your piece on Al Jazeera website, and I, I saw that uh, you, you were saying that uh, you were asked by the Ministry of Islamic Affairs of Morocco about your in intentions. I don't know if they were questioning your in intentions, but you, you were saying that they wanted to know what, what your intentions were and what you had to say about Islam and so on. And um, I absolutely understand that you, you had really, really challenging conditions to film this uh, documentary. And uh, can, you, can you tell us more? What were the challenges? How did you get this access to this world? How did you make that possible? Okay, no, it's a good question. It's probably quite a long answer. Um, when we first approached the Ministry of Islamic Affairs, um, we, we spent probably about a year talking to them about the film that we wanted to make. And they were a, a bit suspicious, I would say, because there had been a lot of international media coverage of the Morshida when it, when it launched in 2006. Lots of short news pieces for different channels, and like Fox News and, and people like that in America. And the, they hadn't been very happy with going to stop terrorism and, you know, Lots of Muslims are terrorists, but these women aren't. It was, it was quite kind of um, so, uh, quite sensational and, and not really getting what they were trying to do. So, really interested in, in the work that they were doing on the ground. And we, that, through talking to them, they let us sort of spend time just observing them and talking to the women as they went about the work and also talking to the women that they were working with in the mosque. Um, and I think through seeing a bit more about what, the, 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 through seeing the work that they were doing and then talking to the ministry sort of more and more about what we wanted to do, they, they started to sort of trust us a bit more, I suppose. But I think that, that was the initial hurdle. And once we got over that, there were sort of several more, because although they were, in theory, really happy for us to be there filming, sorry, that's me, that's um, Although, although in theory they were really happy for us to be there filming this, they didn't really understand what we meant by an observational documentary. So they couldn't really understand why we wanted to keep coming back and filming more. Um, and then it was, I mean, a lot of the challenges were actually quite practical because the women are working in public institutions, so in mosques which are under government control, schools which are under government control, hospitals prisons, each place that they worked in needed a whole different set of permissions from the ministry in charge of that. And the permissions in Morocco are just incredibly sort of complex and you think you've got them and then you haven't and everything's agreed and then you turn up with a camera and then you can't film. So there was a lot of that that went on and on and on. And I mean, I spent quite a lot of time in Morocco, um, but actually not that much time filming. There was a lot of time expecting to film and then not being able to film. So those, those were the sort of practical challenges. Um, but then there's also a, a difference in culture in Morocco towards filming. So people aren't necessarily used to talking with the camera there or to sort of, or to seeing films actually where people talk about their personal lives. So that took a bit of time for people to get used to. And because we were mainly filming with women, a lot of the time the women would be really keen to be part of it and would start filming a story with one of the women and then when we'd go back something would have happened, maybe a husband or a brother or a man in the family would have heard about it and just said you can't carry on. So there was, the challenges were really that there was lots of sort of starting and stopping all the time so it was quite difficult to sort of follow stories through. Um, which is why I mean, it's, it's kind of quite a kaleidoscopic structure. You know, it doesn't really follow single narratives, which was certainly the intention at the beginning, but just the realities of what we were able to do, but that it's much more of a sort of patchwork, but that hopefully within that it tells a, a, a sort of bigger story. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I, I, I can hear you. It, it, it just talk. 
Um, I'll get the questions from the audience. I, I, I'm sorry you cannot see that because we, we couldn't do that technically. I, I don't know why. But um, um, if anyone has a question, just raise your hands, please. Um, um, to be honest uh, with you, I, I didn't really uh, see that coming. You know, I, that, that documentary was very educational for me too. Even though I, I, I live in the Middle East and uh, I uh, was familiar with the uh, Arab world, world, I thought so. Uh, it was really, really educational because I really did not expect so many educated, brave women. And when I, when I say educated, I don't necessarily mean uh, well, girls and women uh, who go to school because uh, Rachida, uh, she never went to school, but she was so smart and yes. so strong. I was really, really amazed. Thank you so much for finding these people for us. Because you, even though it's, uh, it's not Arab country, Georgia itself, but, but, but we have the uh, Georgian Orthodox Church very, very powerful here, politically powerful, I would, I would say. And I wish we had the, uh, those kinds of spiritual guides here, because nobody talks to Georgian women. Uh, as, as they say, more than 80% of, uh, of Georgians go, go to church regularly, and they, they consider themselves Orthodox Christians. And, um, uh, and uh, uh, I think that Georgian Orthodox uh, church um, uh, has the same same attitudes and same 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 um, uh, uh, thoughts about uh, the women's right and equality. equality but uh, uh, but um, I wish they did the same here. Uh, I, I had this feeling uh, that hu human experience is really really universal because I saw the same same problems in this. The same problems that uh, women face in you know, all over the world, including this country, in Georgia. Um, so I don't see. Uh, yeah, yeah. We have we have one question. What we just You can um, say that in, in, in Georgia. No, I, I, I'll try to I'll I'll try to translate it into English. I'm not interested in the question. I'm not interested in the yeah, so the question is uh, about the screening this uh, documentary in Morocco itself. Uh, did, you, did, you, did you have the screenings in Morocco? And uh, did th those people uh, in the documentary have, uh, have, uh, have a chance to, to, to see that? And what was your reaction? So, yes, we've had, we've had some screenings in Morocco um, so far at festivals. It's going to be on Moroccan television in the next month. So that would be really the main screen where it gets seen much more broadly. The reactions have been fantastic actually. The, it's, it's really interesting. I think actually when we, we expected there to be a lot of resistance to the Morshida and what they were trying to do just from society generally. But what we found was the opposite a lot of the time. Lots of people sort of understood what they were doing. Both men and women were really supportive <coughs> of it. And that's kind of been the case when we've shown it in Morocco, people come and say, wow, I didn't know, you know, lots of people in Morocco don't know about these women and what they're doing. So people have come and been really pleased to see it and then gone on to sort of find out about what she might be maybe working in their area. Um, so, so far, the reactions have been really good. The only um, slightly, the, the slightly negative reaction has actually come from the government department who run it because there's been a bit of a political change since we shot the film and the government has become slightly more conservative. They, they still support what the Morshadets are doing. They're quite scared of alienating the very conservative people in society. So they don't really want it to be publicised or to make a big deal of it. So we were hoping that they, you know, because I think it's a really positive reflection, really, of a program that they've done, we thought that their response would be very positive, and actually they kind of just said that they like it, but then kind of almost tried to ignore it, which is which has been unexpected. But in terms of the people in Morocco, the response has been wonderful so far, and we're, we're currently sort of organising, working in collaboration with a women's NGO, um, and the British Council to organise um, 
sort of travelling cinema around rural areas in Morocco to show the film to people in villages and in the mountains and in areas where they might not otherwise, otherwise see it. And I'm really looking forward to that. I think that will be a fantastic experience and hopefully we'll be able to sort of have discussions around that at each screening as well. Oh, wonderful, that sounds just great. Um, and uh, uh, as uh, this um, Morchi that we're saying in the documentary, uh, they're, uh, uh, they had to do this six months uh, training program. They had to go through uh, this uh, six months training program, and it is perhaps uh, sponsored by the government, right? So does yeah. the current government support this uh, program? Is it yes, ongoing? yes, it's still running. So each, it's actually a year. It's a whole. It's like a. It's like a postgraduate diploma, really. Um, so it's a year, a very intensive year of study and each year there are 50 more women who train so there are probably now um, about 500 of them working across the country and that that's still happening even though the the government has sort of slightly oh, they haven't stopped the program in any way or restricted it but they're just being less public about it i think because they don't want to antagonize the more conservative elements in in morocco that's my that's my perception of it. I might be wrong. <laughs> oh, that's that's very interesting. Uh, so the uh, do these um, women really go to mosques and uh, do this preaching alongside with imams, for example? Do, they, do yeah. they do they get to talk to men? Because I to be honest with you, I didn't really see a lot of men here in this. No, no, no it's definitely more women. But that's also partly because. Society is quite separate, and the mosque has separate spaces for men and for women. Yeah, it, yeah, we know. So, so, um, so, so they are working with women in the mosque. They work with a lot of teenage boys in schools. I would say that's kind of where they work mostly with men. And they may work. They, do, you know, they would certainly talk to men. It wouldn't be an issue for them to talk to men. But because, because generally they are working with women in the mosques, um, and they are working with women in prisons because they go into the women's prison rather than the men's prison. Um, most of the work that they do with adults is women, is, is, is with women. And there are male equivalents, they're called Morshid, who are doing similar work with men. But the Morshid and Morshid work very closely together, so there are a lot of projects that they work on together. Um, and I think there just is, you know, culturally, it's in Morocco, it's more appropriate then to work with women and for the men to work with men. Because a lot of the time they're talking about quite personal things, quite intimate things, and that would never have happened before. And for a lot of the women who talk to them, that was the that was the one of the really exciting things because they've never had anybody they could go and talk to before about problems in their marriage or with their children, because they would never go and talk to a man about that. Absolutely. So, if you have yes. women talking to you like uh, saying saying like oh you you were given this uh, rights by God and you don't have to marry at uh, the age of twelve and something yeah. like that it's still important absolutely yeah um, yeah, uh, yeah uh, I think uh, we we have one more question and please um, I would ask one question that uh, it's it's really big problem actually and. The, some kind of the problem is existing here in Georgia as well and around the Caucasus countries and mostly it's existing in the, around the Muslim countries but like my question is that how, how would you see uh, the women and men I mean the female and the, like male how they are like conducting this to spreading these traditions around like the, over the country it's really interesting. I, I mean that, like, how, how would you see that uh, the woman is conducting like this problem? They, actually, the men is like the really conducting this kind of the problems, like the, over the like the tradition, over the family, it's like they're spreading these traditions, you know. And uh, how the woman is uh, like the conduct, conducting these kind of the problems. Uh, Did you understand the question? So, so, so I assume you... you I, I'm sorry, I, I, I could obviously understand English, but it was quite distorted, so I couldn't hear everything. Would you mind just... I, I think... Um, I don't know, something 
about the acoustics in the room and that it was distorting, so I didn't um, like the Okay, yeah, I'll try to fix that. Um, conducting, you uh, can we talk to the... So, you know, it has to happen, it 
has to happen in both ways, I don't think. Change can't happen if only women are trying to change it. But, but I think together, hopefully, the change will slowly happen. And, um, Does that answer the question? I, hope I, I don't know if I've answered the question. No. He said yes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, actually, uh, <laughs> That's I mean, the question so, without, without the full answer. Uh, so we have more comments. Um, I am dominant. I am dominant. I I am dominant. I am dominant. I am I am dominant. I I Poche is saying in a, uh, is saying about uh, she, she's talking to the girl in the school and uh, she uh, she's uh, she's telling her that if one method doesn't work you should try another and she almost sounded to me like Atiku Spinch like if you fail you should uh, you should try again yeah. and um, failure doesn't 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 mean that you should not try again. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's why I said that it was very optimistic and it was really, really educational because uh, pers uh, personally I, did, I didn't really um, uh, uh, know that something like that was happening in Morocco. And um, uh, perhaps uh, I, I still have one question to ask. But how, uh, do you think that uh, other Arab countries can learn the lesson from Morocco? Do you think that it's... Uh, it's possible, or or or, uh, or the political context is different in or in Morocco, and it, it cannot possibly be uh, the same case in other Arab um, countries. But I know in Egypt there was a similar project that, that began, and in Tunisia they started something similar as well, and also Turkey. Um, I don't know how. I don't know anything about how the projects were sort of developing or how wide reaching they are. That, there. But certainly, a lot of other countries were interested in what Morocco were doing and sort of trying to do something similar. And just from my own experience, of kind of working in different Arab and Muslim countries um, on other projects as well, I'm always really sort of impressed by the number of really strong women. I mean, doing quite incredible work. So yeah, I'm optimistic. I think it could work in other in other places as well, as long as there's enough kind of groundswell and support behind it. Yeah, I hope that's true. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you so much for your time and for this wonderful, you. amazing experience you gave us. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for the opportunity to screen it.